You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. And we saw one, and I get to go in it. I don't really know which one is my favorite car because there is lots of cars I like. (laughs) I like that. Which one did you get to get in? Do you remember which one it was? I forgot. It was the, uh, I believe it was the GTO, if I remember correctly. It was the one from the uh, from Fast Nine. I think it's been in other ones, too. We're not fully Fast and Furious first, so we might have missed a few in there. We're watching <laughs> them out of order. I was going to say, there were so many of those movies that that came out right one right after the other, it almost seems. I know. You remember, like, the tagline for Fast and Furious 2 was, like, Too Fast, Too Furious? And I was wondering, like, what would be the sequel to that? Like, Three Fast, Three Furious? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it just it started getting ridiculous after that, for sure. Uh, but not like it wasn't ridiculous before that. But. No, no, of course. You know, the, the kids <laughs> didn't already need a reason to be uh, running up and down the street. Of course, where where we're at, we actually had a lot of street racing happen here in San Antonio when those movies came out, and oh, really? uh, uh, due to like a few crashes, like you know, they really cracked down on all kinds of street racing. Like it almost it became like a felony at some point. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's like I, a toy. It's like a store. It's like raining cars. Like it's raining cars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like Sam's favorite song. It's raining men. <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite cars to shoot when we go to car shows? The most coolest cars and the most. Awesome cars. Most awesome cars. Jackson really, you probably see from his Instagram, but he really likes details on cars and like picking out that one small thing about a car that he really likes. I love it. Well, you guys have been at this for what, like a year and a half now? So I'm sure like you've got the bugs kind of worked out at this point. Uh, we we see what works and what doesn't, and we uh, we shoot for what works and what we know has worked before for in the past, and still sometimes even that you know will take us off on a tangent. So and then we'll be like, well, the Zoom call is not working, so now we got to jump to a phone call, and if the phone call is not working, then we go back to a Zoom call and see if that works again. And like every every interview has been different. Yep. like it really has. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but it's been amazing. Like we've talked to some great people. We've we've hung out on you know, uh, in some garages and done you know live uh, episodes. You know, a lot of, of what our listeners hear is Zoom calls because everybody we talk to is in other places. Right. But uh, you know, we have been able to do some of our episodes you know in person with people, mm-hmm. and that's always been fun. Like we've just kind of done a little bit of everything, so you know we've we've really liked where everything has gone in this you know year, yeah, mm-hmm. one year of doing the custom couple, and then mm-hmm. we're now into like uh, eleven or twelve episodes of Rod and Style Radio, so and twenty or thirty for our original show so yeah doing two shows now and doing all this it's like wow maybe we are doing some good because <laughs> people <Boy>. like it <laughs> oh yeah it's it's awesome it's you know it's a great show to listen to because i mean it, it it's it, it touches on a lot of topics and there's a lot of good texture and history to it but it doesn't dive too deep into the technical side of things so it's great for somebody like me that is, you know, that doesn't build cars, but is, but still in the community where it's not so much about like the technical how to, um, you know, or like about one specific car, or one specific, you know, tech custom build or something like that. So yeah, I mean, it's it's great stuff just to have on when I'm working. It's just back, you know, in the background. Um, yeah, and it's just it's it's fun to hear all the stories and you know everybody talking about what they're up to. Exactly, and and that's what we really like about our show 
is you know just touching on the whole uh culture aspect of it and lifestyles and you know the different uh points of view that that people have within the scene you know whether they're a uh just a a car guy that enjoys the the hobby or if they're a builder that does it for a living or a painter a painter a pinup model Mm -hmm. uh you know just touching on the the lifestyles of all these you know different sets of eyes in the in the culture yeah and making it smaller too i mean that's that's the fun thing is that every region has its own little differences and idiosyncrasies and nuances and so to get people on from all over is really interesting because you get all those different perspectives and it's you know i i think people tend to sort of stick in their regions pretty often and so it becomes a feedback loop so it's great to have you know shows like yours like the podcast where you do get a wider outside perspective oh yeah and we've talked to people from all over uh you know from you know folks local here in texas and in canada all the way up to canada uh you know and everywhere in between so now we're hitting uh you know california the west coast we've ha- we've had a few people like yourself uh, out on the west coast we've had people from new york and out on the east coast and so. then florida and florida yeah and we just had everybody from all i feel like i need to get a map of all the 50 states i'm like all right we've talked to someone from here 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 all right this is the next one we got to figure out we got to find someone here that way we could say we've done everybody in 50 states yeah, we'll we'll put it out and all of our listeners on Rod and Style Radio. If uh, if you go to our our uh, social media and you find this map that Sam's going to create tonight, <laughs> uh, please uh, message us in if if that map is where you're at and there is not a pin in that. So, what would that be like? Maybe uh, Seattle, Washington. If you're in Seattle, Washington, and we haven't talked to you yet, uh, let us know. We, we'll need to get you on a microphone. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. You guys are going to need to go international after this. Still oh, yeah. Like the, the international edition. Oh, my gosh. I, it, it's funny that you say that. Uh, we got a random phone call from a, a really good friend of mine, Ollie. Oh, Ollie. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's in Germany. And mm-hmm. he calls me on Facebook at just the randomest times, like, because he's not sure, like, what time it is, you know, in Germany compared to Texas. So, uh, you know, it'd be like eight in the morning on a Sunday and he'll just call me up and be like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, well, <laughs> just opening my eyes at this point. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're planning on getting Ollie on the on the podcast here pretty soon. So we'll we'll have a perspective of a Buick owner yeah, in Germany. He has, he has a, a 60. Yeah, he has a 60 Buick. So we enjoy the fact that we both like Buicks. But yeah, he has like the thickest accent in the world. And it's hilarious. I love speaking with him. So yeah, we're, we'll be excited to have him on there. And then we have a couple of people that want to talk to us from um, Australia. Mm-hmm. And so it's just trying to figure out like all these different time zones. I'm like, okay, so that's like five o'clock in the morning for us. And that's like basically midnight for you. All right, <laughs> we got to figure this out somehow. But no, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed all the people that we've gotten to meet through this because I mean, I mean, sometimes we can't always travel. This is kind of our plan this year to travel a lot more, but it's nice when we can, like, do something like this. I heard you guys are, might be coming out to Ventura. Yes. the Nationals. Nice. Yes, sir. Sure, I will see you there. That's nice. If we do, then we definitely will have to meet up and hang out and do something together out there because that's what we're planning on. We're definitely planning to go out there. Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. Venture is one of the good ones. Venture RPM Nationals. I mean, there's I guess there's so many good ones happening now. Uh, yeah, and especially you know after shutdown, um, yeah, everybody just wants to be out and <clears throat> at events. So yeah, there's tons of stuff going on this year. Yeah, uh, we missed a couple of the really good ones uh, for 2022. So 2023. We're, we actually have a list of car shows that we were like, we want to make it out to yes. you know, all of, you know, all of these shows if possible. But of course, traveling uh, requires, you know, lots of planning for people who have day jobs. And, you know, we, we've got to, you know, figure out a gas budget right now that's just looking like it's going to be ridiculous. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're, we're, uh, 
We're thankful that uh, we haven't hit the numbers that California has hit this last week. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> what is uh, what is gas prices in your area right now? Well, you know, it's uh, there's like one gas station in town that's like 850 and that's the one like all the news stations are just parked around it and that's the that's the one that makes the news but like everywhere else it's 580 which still is you know fucking terrible but it's not 850 <laughs> oh <So>. my god <laughs> yeah you know and they predict it's going to go up what like another three bucks by the end of the summer so it's going to be a painful summer for road trips for sure oh my god yeah summer summertime is always like the time of year that the gas prices always kind of hike up and like everybody's like you know it's not wintertime gas they change the, <laughs> the formula on us and they're gonna up the price and it it's always you know everybody trying to take vacations in the summertime it always ups our price but uh, it, you know, we we've been holding real tight to three ninety nine gas here in San Antonio. Like that's nobody that's wants a, nobody wants to budge the to the four dollars. And I'm like, you know what? Let's stay at that three ninety nine. I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's weird. Like all of the gas stations are mm-hmm. all the same. So it's like there's no rivalries going on. There's no like uh, you know price war of any sort. Like they're all just sitting at three ninety nine right now. <laughs> It's really weird right now. It's, you know, I I'm I grew up in a time where like all of the gas stations would fight with each other for you know who was gonna have you know a, you know a penny cheaper gas you know and they would go back and forth in the same day changing their prices, but you know it is what it is. We'll we'll get through it and we've yeah. we've done worse. <laughs> Probably not, but uh, you know we've done bad. So. <laughs> <we're> gonna- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah who knows i mean maybe everybody will just kind of stick around and pay attention to their local regional events so you know all good yeah or the other. so ben like where did uh where did daredevil come from where like is with uh with the photography and stuff that you're doing now when did you get started with all that well uh the name daredevil the brand uh i started about a year and a half ago um, you know, and I, 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 I have a, an arts background and a photo background, and I've been doing photography since forever. You know, my dad was an amateur photographer. My grandfather was an amateur photographer. Uh, he had a small stint with National Geographic. So, like, you know, cameras have always just sort of been in the family. Um, so, you know, and it's a, a lot of what I photograph is is sort of road adventures and travels in Americana, um, you know, and just sort of capturing like the 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 old America um, uh, from the perspective of the road, uh, you know, and like just naturally a lot of that uh, involved vintage cars and stuff like that. And so I, I have another Instagram feed, Helvetica Danger, which is all uh, just sort of vintage Americana, that sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, and I noticed that the car stuff was starting to take a disproportionate amount of real estate there. Um, and for people that aren't necessarily interested in cars, I'm sure I was probably just boring everybody. Um, <laughs> so I decided that, I, what am I trying to say? Like, I, I decided that splitting off Daredevil was the best way to sort of merge my interests in vintage and cars and actually try to make a go of it and try to make a living out of it. And it's not something that I'm making a living out of now. I mean, honestly, nobody ever makes a living off of photography or probably podcasting or. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. yeah, no, we're uh, right there with you. And this is something yeah. that you purely enjoy that you would like to make, you know, that your end game. Oh no, we completely understand that. We've come to the fact that, you know, we, we love what we do and we continue doing it for a reason. And, you know, we would like it to be our main income, but, you know, it's just not in the cards right now. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, everybody's just kind of doing it because they love to do it. Um, you know, I mean, that's pretty much why I wanted to uh, start Daredevil Link specifically to photograph cars, um, you know, just so that there is that venue and that there, there is a place within the community that I can share all of that and share my perspective on cars. And like you said, man, as far as not making a, a living doing things like this is like what we've come down to with uh, like with the podcasting side of things is that, you know, we have this as just one of our platforms. You know, it's like uh, it, it's not going to be the platform, but it's it's part of the whole you know story. You know, it, it's one thing that we do that will build a, up the brand. You know, along with you know social media, along with 
you know, selling of merchandise. Like it's all just like a piece of the puzzle, which I'm sure that you've seen how your photography, you know, it's a, it's a large piece of that puzzle, but then it, it pushes folks towards, you know, uh, going to your website and it pushes folks going to, uh, check out Jackson's photography and the things that he's doing. And, you know, that I'm sure at some point it's not so much that the one thing will make you, you know, uh, a career living out of, but putting several things together out of that aspect would probably do that for you. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, my, my day job is uh, a designer. I do design and animation. Um, and so this was also my attempt to sort of merge those interests where I don't, you know, like a, for my day job, I love what I do for my day job. I do a lot of work in, in film and TV. Um, but, you know, that that's a, a different path than my hobbies, my interests, you know, like my personal interests in, in cars and vintage culture. Uh, and so that's what daredevil was uh was 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 sort of established for it was so that i could sort of find a way professionally to be able to do those things so it's not just about photography but it's about sort of bringing in my other creative interests as well very cool photography being the main thing for now um but yeah eventually i'd, I'd like for that to be a little bit more all-encompassing in terms of you know design and branding and all of that kind of thing absolutely yeah no i i definitely see that with uh uh, with your day job, have you done anything that uh, that folks would recognize as far as you know, as far as TV and all that goes? Maybe um, if you remember, there's a movie that Will Ferrell was in, and I think 2007 or eight called Stranger Than Fiction. Yeah, like the only serious film he's ever done. And if you you might remember at the beginning of the movie, it's set up where there's a monologue, and he gets up and he goes through his day, and there's all these these sort of graphics that pop up around him that mm-hmm. talk about what he does through the day. That's that's me. <laughs> oh wow! Very yeah. cool, man. Very there's cool. There's that. Um, there's if you're a, if you're a James Bond fan, if you remember Quantum of a Quantum of Solace, which was three Bonds ago, the opening title sequence for that, uh, which you know, like the <clears throat> the opening titles of Bonds are always like the silhouettes of the girls mm-hmm. and, uh, and all that. My old studio in Kansas City, and I produced the the title sequence to Quantum of Solace. Wow, so very probably, cool. like, the biggest the the biggest thing that we've worked on that people would recognize. Very cool. I was sitting here going, man, he's going to be the one that says that he got the little lamp for Pixar to jump onto the screen and turn on. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but uh, the animation studios that used to call ourselves Pix aren't. We had a little uh, fake animation, <laughs> uh, Pixar animation that did the same thing. So, you know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, well, yeah, and I, so yeah, I still do a lot of broadcast and TV stuff, but more and more it feels like <clears throat> the stuff that I'm doing with Daredevil is kind of taking over and, you know, becoming what I'm doing more full time. That's really cool, man. We'll have to get uh, Daredevil Inc. to create some animations for the custom couple. Oh, yeah. Rod and Style Radio. That'd be, sure. that'd be super cool, man. So tell us about uh, growing up in cars. Like, what did what is what is the first thing you drove? <laughs> uh, well, the first thing I my first owned car was a Honda Prelude for my parents, so that doesn't really count. <laughs> 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 I don't remember what happened to that car, but my first uh, my first like my car my car was a '66 Bronco um, that I picked up right right outside of college, um, <clears throat> and yeah, I had that car for a long time. I love Broncos, so you know I. I Hated to let that one go, but it was kind of a junker when I got it, and it just never kind of graduated past junker status, no matter, you know, how much work I'd put into it. <laughs> like the transmission was backwards on it because we couldn't figure out how to get it to <clears throat> work properly because it would, had fused before I picked it up. So, like, literally, you'd have to, where the reverse was, you'd shift down to uh, first instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, that, so I had that and then upgraded to a 66 Thunderbird. Um, and a 53 Airstream Flying Cloud. So that was our sort of travel uh, travel set for a while. Wow. And then that was all in Kansas City where cars are cheap and abundant and, you know, you have plenty of space to park them. And then moving out here to California, we had to get rid of all that and, you know, downgrade. So currently my only vintage <clears throat> is, a, is a 50 pan head motorcycle. That's kind of a work in progress. One of uh, one of the guys that I work with, and uh, I actually grew up with his son. Uh, he's got a fifty-two. 
uh, Harley and absolutely amazing bikes. I, I love those. Of course, uh, he it, there, those are the bikes that never stop leaking. So like he's like, if there's an oil spot under it, that's fine. If there's not, that means it's empty. So we need to put more oil in it. Yeah, it's I, you know I mentioned that my studio is in my garage and that's where I work every day, but that's also where I keep the bikes. Um, so you know, like I'll go out for a ride and bring the bike back and work and turn around and there's this giant puddle of oil on the ground. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a bit of a working studio. <laughs> yeah. With uh, uh, what was the uh, difference in the car scenes that you saw coming from? Kansas City moving out west. What what was the the major differences that you saw with that? Well, you know, I think it's it's interesting with every region because it seems like it, whether or not this is sort of just you know by osmosis with everybody else in the community or in that region or what have you, but you know, like every every region seems to have its little sort of differences and nuances. And, you know, definitely like in the central Midwest, just because cars are so abundant and because the the climate is so humid, there's a lot of rusty cars. So, it, it you know, if, if that's the reason why there's a lot of rat rods that, you know, are in the central Midwest, I don't know. But like that, that for me was the biggest difference between the Midwest and here um, was just the quality of the builds. And I, I don't necessarily mean that, um in a derogatory way because like, I, I love rat rods, but you know, when you move or when you come out here to Southern California, the cars are a lot more put together, a lot more, clean, oh, yeah. a lot, you know, more fun to put into them. Um, you know, and then also just the, there's just, it, there's a lot more diversity out here, you know, like you've got the Latino culture and their cars, and, you know, low riders and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then that's different than when you go up to uh, like the Pacific Northwest where, you know, people are very into traditionals and very clean um, sort of non-customs and just getting stuff back to, you know, like bare bones traditional builds. So I know and that's why I love traveling and photographing so much is just to catch those sort of regional nuances and differences and, you know, how people approach builds differently. Yeah, no, I, we have had, you know, uh, some of the bigger car shows here in Texas where you just see a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, like everything comes out to the car shows, you know, whether it be uh, traditionally built hot rods or stock Model A's. You know, we, we've got a, a friend of ours that uh, where we eat breakfast at every Sunday that he has two stock Model A's. Mr. Rudy. Yeah, Mr. Rudy. Uh, him and his wife come out to the little restaurant that we eat at every Sunday, and they uh, and he switches off every Sunday. So every other week, it's a different car. Yeah, he has a black one, and then he has a green one, but it's completely stock. Like it's like something that you would just go like back in the day to the dealership and buy it, and that's the car. He has it completely all original, and he loves it. So they'll switch every weekend of which car they bring, but absolutely amazing person. Uh, we love seeing him every time. Yeah, uh, yeah. His his cars are like movie quality. Like he he, you could put his car in a in a movie that was about the nineteen twenties, and you know it would fit. It would absolutely fit the bill. So, but we we see a little bit of everything. And of course, I, we are also in a you know central south you know part of Texas, and you know we're also in a city. So, like, of course, you know, the bigger the population, you're going to have uh, a wider range of what people like. So, uh, you know, I, I love the fact that you can go into some of the different regions and see what is more dominant in, in some of these places. We kind of go from zero to 100 because you'll see the people who, like, barely have their car running, but they're like, it made it. And then you'll see the person who's like, it's done. It's the way I want it. It works. It drives. Like, it's like their daily driver. So it's right. very, like, all over the board. You never know what you're going to see at half of these shows. So I always think that's really cool. But definitely when, you know, we're going to be doing these traveling to, you know, to California for uh, Ventura, and then we're going to go to uh kentucky for beatersville it's like we want to see all these other cars to see what everybody else does right cheat off other people's homework yes i'm <laughs> like let me see what are you doing over here how do you do this 
Well, Let we me have... ask, do you have a theory about Texas and Oklahoma? Because it seems like there's a huge concentration <laughs> of hot rodding that happens specifically in Texas and Oklahoma. And I've never been able to quite figure out why that is. They're exactly. like the best friends of each other. <laughs> well, Texas, uh, yeah, no doubt. Texas has the most junkyards. Mm -hmm. Like we, you know, you can about every city now of course they are going away a lot of uh, a lot of the old junkyards uh are being uh you know uh inherited by kids that don't want them anymore and you know a lot of stuff in these yards are getting scrapped you know and and uh you know sold for the the, the weight of the metal anymore so there's not as many as there was you know let, let's say 15 years ago so I don't date myself too hard um, there's not as many of these yards but I know Texas had the the majority of old you know old metal sitting in in scrap yards and uh, of course you know the joke always is, is that you know you know the only thing keeping Texas from falling in the ocean is how much Oklahoma sucks but uh, we have a bunch of friends in Oklahoma, and they, I mean, they've got some of the, like, the coolest stuff that they probably came down here to Texas and got and took back with them. Yep. <laughs> Which, in turn, people from Kansas City would pick up. I noticed that, like, a lot of the Kansas City cars would come from Oklahoma, which, who knows, by way might have come through Texas, too. Yeah, no, we always we always have to uh, make fun of Oklahoma just a little bit because of all all of our buddies up there. And, you know, we we have so many friends and you know, and the Oakley Oaky sleds and you know all those cats. Every time they come down here, and then this year we're actually going to make it up to Oklahoma for the the sleds. Uh, greet with meat. Greet with meat. That's their little car show that they put on. That. Uh, they uh, donate a bunch of money to the Ronald McDonald House, mm -hmm. and the last couple of years we haven't been able to make it up. But this year, the custom couple is going to make an appearance and yeah, that's uh, go June, hang out with them. June tenth or eleventh, I believe. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's it's just I I always find it so funny that like it's always Oklahoma and Texas you hear about. Like everybody knows everybody. If you if you're from Texas, you know every every single like. Car club that's out there, you know everybody that's out there because everybody knows the Oki sleds down here from either if they know the person or they've just heard stories. They're like, oh, we know who they are, but like it's just so cool like that. It's like really like that's that's weird to me. Yeah, and like it, it is kind of weird to us because just because we already hang out with them all the time, like we don't even think about it. Like we're all at the all the same car shows. Uh, especially the ones that happen in like the Dallas area mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, it's not too much of a, a trek for them to come down or, you know, there's stuff that goes on there, uh, in the Oklahoma cities that we, uh, go up and try to be a part of as well. Uh, right. we all, we all just kind of hang out in the same circles and we all kind of dig the same thing. So it's just like natural for us. But uh, then they have this huge custom show every year, uh, the Starboard Starboard. show. And, Starboard. you know, yeah. some really cool builds, uh, you know, get taken to that show. This year, we actually had uh, Jeremy Jones on our show and talking about his reveal at Starbird. He, he revealed that he uh, he built uh, Space Junkie 1.5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Space Junkie 1.5, huh? Yeah, so the, the cool story about that and the folks that listen to our show, go, go back and, and check out those episodes if you haven't already. Uh, Ian Russell built Space Junkie and then tore it apart and used the parts uh, off of it to build Space Junkie 2, which was the, which uh, was one of his uh, hot rods that had a bubble top and you know all that. Well, Jeremy found the body for Space Junkie, the original one, and was like, I know this car. I've, I've, I've seen it before. I know I've seen this car before and found out, oh, yeah, this is the original space junkie and decided he was going to build it and he got Ian to help him, you know, with parts of it. And, and, uh, he got his dad to help him with parts of it and all that and, uh, made his own rendition of it. So when they unveiled it at, uh, starboard, that's what they put it as was uh, space junkie 1.5. Cause it's not quite the, the two, two already existed. <laughs> I was really hoping to make it down this, uh, there this year, maybe next year. I, I try to do like one, <clears throat> one bigger event every year. So like last year was a uh, hot rod rama up in, uh, um, up in Pendleton, Oregon this year. I'd really like to do gathering at the rock. 
seems like that's sort of where everybody's mm-hmm. gravitating towards. We've been fall, seeing so. a little bit about that. I hadn't heard of that show before. And then we we started seeing some things posted uh, about it recently. So that one does look interesting. Yeah, I haven't I haven't been, but yeah, I've heard good things. So I'm kind of curious. It'd be nice to go back to the Midwest. You know, I, I I'd like doing that every year. Like we when we moved out to California, we decided we weren't going to lose you know touch with our Kansas City roots. So we try to find an excuse to go back every year. And so far, it's been Grease Um but we'll we'll see what it is this year. That's another one that we put on the on the list yeah. for shows that we want to go to is Grease Arama. Uh, yeah. We we've never been to that one, so of course uh, w- when me and Sam got together, like we were like we're gonna do all of these cool things and we're gonna buy cars and we're gonna you know travel the world and the world shut down on us. Yeah, they said no at that point. <laughs> They're like no. Yeah. We're like, we were so ambitious. We're like, we're going to do all this. We're going to travel. We're going to take all this time off and do it. And then everything shut down. It was like, well, it basically told us to calm down. Yeah. Regroup and then come back. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 2020 was a pretty sad year for car events. There was like, there's a few and they were just like the rogue offshoots and nobody wanted to go to them because they're mass required and nobody wanted to wear masks outside and I'm glad we're past that. Yeah, us <laughs> too. <laughs> us too. Did uh, uh, did the shutdowns or any of that affect you uh, directly as far as working goes? Not really. Um, you know, like a lot of what I do for my day job is work on documentary stuff, um, like documentary films and things like that. And <clears throat> you, because of shutdown, that's kind of the only thing that was happening. Uh, mm. Just because you know everybody was staying at home watching TV, anyways. <laughs> right. So like, there's a lot of documentaries being made because you didn't have to have film crews. You could just get like stock footage and cut it together. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of parked in documentaries for a year and a half, uh, which yeah was probably the best the the best possible scenario for what I was up to and uh, keeping the doors open. So but yeah, it, I mean you know, but I work at home and I did before uh, shutdown. So just in terms of like you know daily uh disruption it was it was about the same as it was before yeah same with my wife she's a seamstress and she works at home so nice very cool we'll have to get her to to make sam some uh some pageant dresses Uh (laughs) i can plug her she's rosetti's thread on instagram she does a lot of custom you know vintage stuff and especially like during shutdown mass became like 100 percent her thing she went from just like doing a few for friends and she posted it on her Instagram page and all of a sudden like the orders just started flooding in and that was you know a year and a half of you know 16 hour days of her just pumping out mass over and over and over again oh I believe it I bet yeah that it, it's crazy how uh, this whole pandemic like changed uh, a lot of uh, industries like who would have thought that surgical masks were going to be uh, a necessary thing just to go to the grocery store and things of that nature? Like, uh, we were required to wear them at work because our work, you know, it is work real closely with uh, government and whatever they say, you know, whatever the CDC was saying was uh, required. So it was like all of a sudden we have like this abundance of masks and all kinds of craziness like that we have to have. And I was like, man, somebody just made a bunch of money right now, like overnight. Yeah, we should have been investing in yeah mass stocks before all of this went down. I'm sure we'd be millionaires by now. <laughs> right. You just, if you bought stock in 3M like just yeah. the week before. <laughs> yeah so that is yeah that is totally wild we'll totally uh have to get her to to uh make you some dresses I, sam's oh, yeah. gonna be competing in a bunch of pinup contests this year oh yeah all over the place i like so. i like hype myself up for it but then when i get to the actual stage part i'm just like oh shit oh shit am i really gonna do this i'm like well <laughs> I, well well shit they already told me i gotta go like i have this whole panic mode like five minutes before i even have to do anything i'm like why am i like this i get so excited and then i panic <laughs> <laughs> it never gets easier does it like no. it's always like I, you know like with public speaking or just performing or whatever you know you think after doing it a bunch of times it gets easier and easier but it never does no it gets worse it gets worse each time and then you know that's one of the things i've learned from doing it because i never was like oh i want to do this like i kind of just like 
would do it for fun because I just was like, I want to see how this goes. And then it's like, it is a lot of fun. But at the same time, it's like you're getting judged on how you look, how you dress, how you style it. And it's like, well, shit. (laughs) I'm sure after doing it for a while, the stakes just get higher and higher because at first you're just doing it purely for fun. mm -hmm. And now you have attention and, you know, people are coming up to you. Ever ever since I won Miss Invasion in Dallas, because that's the biggest show that happened. It's one of the biggest shows that happens here in Texas. Like, that's, like, the big one to win. Like, I was competing against girls who were, it was their third or fourth time competing for it. And it was my first time at the show and my first time competing, and I won. And I was like, well, shit. All right. And so, you know, as we've been traveling and we've been talking with people going out, they're like, oh, you won that. I was like, I did. So now I feel like the pressure of like, oh, God, they know I won something. Like, now it's like, okay, now you got to even, like, you got to keep it going. You got to keep that stamina. So, yeah. I feel it a little bit, just a tiny bit. I mean, here's a point. Uh, Ben, you're, you're tattooed. Have you been tattooed recently? Most recent tattoo is this uh, creature from the Black Lagoon, which I got. I, 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 I have a theoretical tattoo uh, uh, trend where any, anytime I go shoot an event, I want to get a, a tattoo from that local artist, uh, which it doesn't really work out that way because it's usually on a weekend and they're closed or whatever. <laughs> but the creature from the Black Lagoon was when I went to France to shoot uh, Normandy Beach Race in 2018. Oh wow! Um, Stop by Dunkirk specifically for this tattoo artist because he does a lot of traditional sailor tattoos in France and he's really well known for it there. Uh, John underscore UAT. If anybody wants to look him up on Instagram, he does fantastic tattoo work. So um, in your in your later years, did the tattoo hurt just a little bit more? <laughs> well. Uh, it, it was more irritating in the sense that I just wanted it done and over with. It's not quite the experience. You're just like, all right, I know what this is like. I don't want to sit here for six hours. Let's just, <laughs> let's just get this done faster. Me and fun. Sam have had this conversation a few times now. And then just recently I had another session done on my back and I had the same conversation with my artist and he, you know, he's an older cat and, and, uh, we were just randomly talking and he's like this shit hurts more no- like now doesn't it and I, and I was like yes it absolutely does as we've gotten older like i i get to where i don't want to sit for him anymore and i get to where i get antsy and, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> literal thin skin when we get older totally <laughs> yeah so yeah i was like man okay you're tattooed you probably have a perspective on this yeah i i think something's going on with it and we, it's hurting more these days oh yeah I no that. is that is your hand fully black am i seeing that correctly uh, it, it's not completely black uh um, it basically is it basically <laughs> is it, it's it's a cover-up uh i had an i had uh, a yeah. A black sheep. Oh, oh yeah, I can cover up. Yeah. So Ben is, is uh, completely black on one arm. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Oh, one of our was artists was doing that. Uh, yeah. He was blacking out his arm and then going back and putting outlines of like traditional style tattoos in the black. So it, it's like a, yeah, it's a really cool like offset. Like a lot of. Uh, I don't even ha- know how to explain it, but I, it, it's just really nuts the way he's like done these outlines within the black that he's putting on, like just completely blacked out his arm. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's not a completely black hand. I just have a cover up that uh, it was a black sheep that I had tattooed on my hand in a house like years ago. And my artist was like, I don't want to look at that anymore. Uh, so he, completely redid it and made it into a ram and did a Uh whole bunch of like outlines all around it and and background and color and everything so like he still has a couple more sessions to do on my hand but like every time he does it it swells up like a cat paw and i can't (laughs) use my hand very well at that point Uh Yeah, last time I got a tattoo on my forearm, like my my forearm swelled so much, I just looked like Popeye, you know, just this, this giant, like <laughs> twice as large as it usually is. I don't know why that happened that time, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Just today I saw the video from uh, Family Feud where there's like Popeye's favorite food is, and the girl rings in and says chicken. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> she just answered so fast. She's all chicken. I was like, chicken. no, it's it's Benich, damn it. No, it's chicken. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. What do you have uh, coming up on the books for 2022, Ben? Man, this is going to be a busy year for um, events. I mean, it already has been so far. I think it's been almost every weekend that I've been out, you know, at one other random thing or another. Um, so the bigger ones coming up, um, I think I'd like to hit Greece Rama and Gathering at the Rock. Uh, I'm signed up for a cruise that's going around the Canyon Lens for three days in May, which I'm super excited about. That's going to be an awesome cruise. Really? Yeah, so I'm just basically tagging along with a bunch of guys from Arizona and Utah that are meeting up. Um, so I'll be shooting that as they're doing the round um, pretty much around the entire Canyon Lens. So if gas were cheaper, that would be a much more pleasant drive, but is what it is so <laughs> it'll, um, it'll be yeah, fine so let me see what else is coming up soon soon soon, soon. uh no, yeah no, i mean nothing officially on the books other than those you know and like the random cruises that always seem to happen around town um so yeah we'll uh, kind of play it by ear and see what comes up but i've been doing a lot of shooting now for for rod and style as well so i kind of bend wherever the wind goes and what you know what kind of coverage they'd like to of course, and I think that's a, a, probably another big part of being out on the on the West Coast is that you have some kind of car event going on in your own backyard every other weekend at least. It's pretty hard to choose which like <laughs> which of the events to go to because yeah, I mean even in just Los Angeles proper, there's you know events that happen up here in the Valley that happen at the same time as events that happen in the South end and there's cruises happening downtown. And so it's great. Cause yeah, you can really choose like, okay, I'd really just like to shoot traditionals. And so you can go shoot a traditional event or I'd really like to, you know, shoot something with low riders. So it's, yeah, it's great to have that option, but it's also really overwhelming. Like the thing that I liked about living in Kansas city that I tell people all the time is that in Kansas city, you've got like on a weekend, you've got like two really good choices of things to do. And in, you know, in Los Angeles, you've got like 500 choices and it just, it, it's really hard to just sort of figure out like where you want to plant yourself for a weekend. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That whole idea of like, if you just limit yourself to the two things that it's like, okay, well I don't have to think any harder than that. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of the planning is done for you. So that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it is awesome to have all those options, but I, I've noticed too, the tendency is, is that it makes me lazy in the sense that there's just so many things happening regionally that there's less and less excuses to make it out. So I do try to make a conscious choice to, you know, travel to events that are outside of California mm-hmm. uh, because I, I think that is a trap that a lot of California photographers and car people in general fall into is that the scene probably a lot like Texas, the scene is just so rich here. Mm-hmm. Um, that yeah, you, you you tend to get very territorial about about um, you know the scene and the people that you know and that sort of thing. So oh yeah, there's an there's a oncome there's like a consistent joke about not so much a joke. I don't really know how to word it right without people getting offended because people get offended no matter what. But there's an oncoming joke here in you know Southside San Antonio where you know we live at that. If you live in the south side of San Antonio, you won't drive five miles outside of the south side to go to a car show. It's like you stay only in that vicinity. You will go 10 minutes out and that's it. Like you won't you won't find them. And, you know, the the shows in New Braunfels or the shows in Austin, because that's just where they like to be. They've never liked traveling outside. And so it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, we'll, t- we'll invite you to the show. And then they're like, oh, I'll go. And we know they won't go, but we still offer it. We're like, hey, I mean, just check out the show. But yeah. Yeah, it's not so much a joke as it, uh, as it is uh, facts. Absolute facts. <laughs> No, uh, no, we've we've got a couple friends that that we travel with, like uh, to the shows that are you know an hour or more outside of town, and uh, you know, and we all joke about it. Like it's like well, we we'd have a lot more people on the road if if we could get some of these cars to be a little bo- a little bit more reliable. Uh, cause some guys, they, they build their car to be, you know, running the, you know, gas line is coming out of an actual gas can rather than a gas <laughs> tank. Um, you know, things of that nature, but, uh, yeah. you know, 
uh, we we got the Buick to go 45 minutes down the road the other day, so we were happy about that. Yeah, we took it to its first show in New Braunfels, and I drove 68 miles. I know, yeah, wait. How fast was I going? 68. I was going yeah. 68. And I was pretty surprised at that because I didn't think I'd be able to go that fast. I was like, we're going to do like 45, 50. We're not getting there in the fast time. We're going to get there in a, in a nice time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the speedometer doesn't doesn't work properly. Uh, it's just not hooked up to the transmission properly. Uh, but we were passing one of those road signs that tells you to slow down or whatever. And I was like, there's so- no way that thing just told us to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah in, in uh in la the running joke is that everything takes an hour to get to no matter what like it doesn't matter if you're going down the street to the you know to the <laughs> gas station or the grocery store or like clear across town like doesn't matter everything in la takes an hour to get to so as long as you just sort of sign yourself up for that then it's a lot less painful to you know go across town for anything like i remember in kansas city you know like anything over 30 minutes is like no that's crazy why could i why would i possibly do that but you know (laughs) hey it just comes to the territory so yeah you know like for weekend events that happen and get started you know seven in the morning i you know up by like 3 30 just to get ready and there by the time everybody shows up which yeah that's another topic why 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 do hot rod events happen so damn early in the morning? <laughs> yeah, I can't. Can't we all agree that we can just start them at like nine o'clock and you know have time for <laughs> breakfast and come off first? Yeah, I I can't even understand it either. And the and the running joke with that too is like you have no problem waking up for a hot rod event. <laughs> Yeah. Waking up for work on Monday, that's, that's pulling a, teeth. A different story completely. If I got to be up at 3 o'clock, which I do, uh, we get up at 3 o'clock for work Every here. day. Because uh, right now, uh, with the way things are going, we're we're using one vehicle, you know, between me and Sam. And uh, she drops me off at work at 4 o'clock, so she can be at work by 4.30. But yeah, 3 a.m. sucks. But oh, yeah. if it's a hot rod event, shit, I'm up from the night before. No, no problem. He is. Yeah. I'm asleep. I'm like, no. <laughs> this past this past show that we went to, that we took the Buick to, we were supposed to be there at like the gates opening at 8. And we had like a bunch of friends meeting us there and stuff. And I was like, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I had to go to work at like 8 p.m. at night and I worked until like midnight so I got home and I just looked at him I was like no it's not gonna happen I'm telling you right now it's not gonna happen I'm not getting up and sure enough it went off we looked at each other I was like no it's not gonna happen so we were texting everybody we're like we're gonna be there probably at like noon like it's still early enough but yeah no I am not the person that will get up that early I hate it I hate it more than anything yeah, I mean, there's a fun ritual to it. I, I do like the, you know, the the process of getting up that early in the morning and loading stuff in the car and, you know, being the only person on the freeway going to the event. The sun's just barely coming up. You know, there's like there, there is something that's very nice and personal, I, I think, about that, that whole experience. But yeah, then, you know, seven o'clock in the at night rolls around and you're almost falling asleep yep. on the drive home. And yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. See, I grew up with parents that love to bass fish. And uh, it basically was we, we would plan a fishing trip, and if the sun was up, we weren't going to go fishing. Like, right. we had to be on the lake with lines in the water before the sun was up. And that's just how it was. So if the sun got up before we did, well, then we're not going fishing today. <laughs> and I think yeah, that carried just- over into hot rodding for us. There's an event uh, here in LA, well, in Huntington Beach called Dona Derelicts, uh, where it's just, it's a very casual car show. And every weekend, everybody just shows up at a parking lot in front of uh, Adams Avenue Donuts. And they, you know, they just hang out for a few hours and everybody disperses. But everybody disperses by probably eight o'clock in the morning, you know, because everybody wants to, you know, go get their Saturdays done doing other things. So it's a blessing and a curse. Like, it's awesome that, you know, you've got the rest of your day ahead of you but like literally the car show happens from like 5 30 in the morning to 8 and if you get there after that you know <laughs> you'll probably catch a couple of chevys like parked in the corner but that's it wow that's crazy yeah <laughs> well it's ben, fun, but yeah it's it's a bit of a marathon <laughs> <laughs> is uh is there anybody that you would like to give some uh shout outs to while we got them on the show here uh well you guys for having me this is awesome thank oh, 100%. you 100 
Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you know, and like obviously, I'd like to thank Chuck too, just for kind of bringing me into the fold and um, you know introducing me to to you guys. Um, you know, and like nobody else specifically, but I, you know, just giving a shout out to to you know Los Angeles and Southern California where I'm at, and it's just such a great scene to be around, and everybody's just super cool, and it's 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 a wonderful scene to be in, and it's it's humbling and it's a privilege for for me to be here shooting. So I as best as I can give a shout out to the full community here. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, uh, from the custom couple to you, man, we, we definitely enjoyed having you on the show. Uh, rod and style radio has been a really cool, you know, blessing of a, of a podcast to, uh, for us to be able to jump on as a platform and, you know, to meet folks like you and meet folks like Jackson, you know, being able to uh, see the next generation of hot rodding coming up and people who are, are, uh, you know, just absolutely loving, you know, the whole culture and everything. And they're passing that down to their kids the way that we want to with ours. You know, we love seeing that. So congratulations to you for being dad of the freaking year, man. <laughs> and to you guys as well. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get this next generation raised well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, if you have nothing else, we will let our uh, our uh, listeners uh, get back to their normal daily lives, and we will get back to and ours. A portrait and of you guys while as, we're talking. <laughs> as always, folks, stay wild. <laughs>